It's time for another unboxing. We're on to box number two of that giant 14 box, $2,000, 300-pound camera order. And I'm excited to open it and see what we got in here. Same size box as the last one, so maybe a similar amount of cameras if you watched the last one. I'm gonna put a running total of how much projected sales that I have so far in the left corner. And keep in mind that these are all gonna sell at different rates. Some of these cameras I may have to hold on to for three months or six months or a year to sell. Some will sell relatively quickly. So it's not like it's instantly uh, coming in as revenue. It's just projected sales. So that's something that I always have to balance is how long I hold on to something versus how much I have to lower the price to sell it quickly. So my per box cost on this is $142. I believe on our last video, we had a, a projected target of $250 per box. And some of those should hopefully wildly exceed that target and some may fall short. So we'll see how we do in this box. Just go ahead and get started. <laughs> Polaroid eye zone. Whoa, this is cool. Some sort of uh, film camera, it looks like. Um, I've seen these before. I don't think there's a whole lot of value, but this is something that I would go ahead and throw into a bulk donation lot or if I'm putting together a lot of untested cameras to sell. Because I sell untested cameras too. Uh, for stuff that I don't have time to test like this uh, and a variety of other types of film cameras that I don't do much in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that one off to the side. So no value on this one. Man, I've already gotten a few of these out of this box. I think the last box we had two of these. This is a Canon PowerShot SD400 camera. And this is a cute little metal bodied uh, ELF digital camera. It looks decent. It uses a Canon NB4L battery. I have one right here from the last box. Let's pop it in there and see if it works. Ooh, it does. Oh, change the battery pack. I'm gonna go run and grab a quick charged battery, put the battery in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a memory card in as well. Try, I'm gonna try the uh, flash down here and see if it fires, because it's a little bit darker. Yep, cool. So this camera is working. Uh, just clean the LCD off, and uh, the LCD uh, protector is worn, which is very common with these older Canon cameras. When the camera's on, it's not as noticeable. Um, so the value on the last ones from the last box were about $40. This one's in a little bit more worn condition. I'm going to give it a value of $35 with a memory card and a charger, which I happen to have. Got a Panasonic palm quarter here, which does have a flip, flip out uh, LCD. Um, grip is pretty worn. I don't have a battery for this one. I don't have a battery for a lot of older camcorders because a lot of their batteries went bad and you'd have to have the original AC adapter to have them work. Um, so I don't have many of those. So this is something that I'm gonna have to save and test for later. Um, if this was tested and in working condition, it'd have a value of 50 to $60. Nikon Coolpix 4600, cute little uh, tiny digicam. Sold a bunch of these over the years. And if you haven't watched any of my uh, unboxing series or any of my other videos, my name's Kevin. Hi. Um, I have been doing this now full time for seven years, which is hard to believe. And I've been loosely in the camera industry for the last 15 years. And I've bought and sold many types of digital cameras and camcorders. Ooh, noisy lens, but appears to be working. So this camera just a few years ago, five, eight, 10 years ago, was only worth about $10, $12. And now the value on uh, a site like eBay here in the United States is gonna be about $35 with a memory card. Oh, it has one in it. It comes with a two gig, two gig memory card. What do we got here? Oh, Minolta. Oh, neat. Uh, Minolta flash meter four. Cool. So this is powered, I think, by let's see, double A's? a single double A. And then the clock, oh, there is a bit of residue in there. And then there's a clock battery as well, it looks like, which is that smaller size battery. So I believe we can test it just with, uh, with um, the double A. 
just cleaning off some of the residue from a battery that had been left in there for too long. Hmm, not powering on. I jammed enough buttons there. Certainly, certainly try. So, uh, bummer. If this was working, it'd be worth, I think, around 75 to double check. But even as is for parts, if I can't get it to work, we're looking at a value of about $30 on this. Um, so that's something that you would obviously have to disclose when you sell it and just list it as is for parts and people more knowledgeable than me that can actually try to or attempt to fix it can, can do so. Okay. Oh, a charger. Ta-da. Canon LCE5 charger. This is for a Canon LPE5 battery. And I will go ahead and assign a value on this because it does have a value of about $8. And that's about how much I would have to pay for it. Another Panasonic VHS camcorder. Do not have a battery to test. Once again, I'm gonna to try to find an adapter to be able to test these out. Um, these are still have nowhere near as much value as other tape-based camcorders, like uh, mini DV tape camcorders by Sony and Canon have quite a bit of value, um, as do other models of Super 8 or Digital 8 tape. A lot of those are Sony. A lot of them have issues too. So this type of recording format, because of its complexity with gears and the way that the tape mechanism moves, is prone to a lot of issues. Which is one of the reasons why I tend to shy away from these unless they are otherwise included. So because this was kind of a take-all deal, um, I took kind of the bad with uh, the good. So I'm not going to assign a value, but hopefully I can at some later date, uh, test this and see if it works. Polaroid Instax Mini 7S. It's missing the control mechanism at the top and also missing the viewfinder piece that goes over this. And the battery compartment looks like it had a small explosion inside. So that doesn't look promising. I've sold the doors before. There's some other uh, YouTubers that I follow that say when in doubt, part it out. Um, you can actually sell these doors for like six or seven dollars. Um, this one's in kind of rough shape. Might be able to get that gray stuff off. So maybe a little bit of value here. Um, but for now, we won't assign any value to it. Got a Nikon Coolpix 4800. This is a non-rechargeable battery that I have in there. Power's on. Lens moves out. Lens actually looks pretty good. Let me get my little cleaner here. A little bit of lens noise, that's normal for this model. Really in nice condition, wow. That's cool. Neat. Uh, any memory card? No. Let me throw in a one gig or a two gig card here and we'll test it with the memory card. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is in really nice, uh, really nice working condition. Um, with a memory card, you're looking at a value of about $30 on this camera. Nikon Coolpix 4800. Oh, it's a camera. Whoa. Um, let's see. Helio Flex 3000T. This feels like one of those plastic Time Magazine cameras that you see a lot that were popular in the 80s and 90s. I'm gonna have to see if this one will even work. It it's, it has a plastic lens too. Very cheap, uh, very cheap camera. Um, not gonna have any value. And if I find stuff that is still usable, then I'll donate it. But uh, I don't even know if this is usable, so I need to need to look at it a little bit more later. Oh wait. Okay, Konica Minolta, Damage Z5. This one has a working battery tray. If you watched the last video, you saw two uh, Konica Minoltas with troublesome battery trays. One was broken and one was missing. So this is gonna use AA battery. Nope. 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 Move it to auto. Yay. Okay, we'll see if it takes a picture. Yep. 
Nice. It's going to have a value of about $40 with a used good working condition tested with a memory card. So a lot of the value on these is because they are tested. Um, you can find these often quite a bit more inexpensively on eBay, untested, or in various types of working condition. And with that camera, we just passed over the cost that I paid for that box, just barely. So we'll see, there's a few more cameras left in here. Um, just based on what I saw initially, it didn't look like it was gonna be a great box, but you never know. Another uh, Fujifilm Instax Mini, this one's actually missing the door. So maybe I can Frankenstein these. It's the same camera, this one was the one Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's what uh, it was supposed to have on the top. That's the menu selection that I was showing you earlier. So I just Frankenstein this camera. Oh, it's got a flash issue. Dang. Potentially. It's missing the flash outer housing plastic. You can see there. I still want to give this a shot. Let's throw some double A's in there. And uh, Oh, that, that feels good. You gonna work? Oh, it feels a little floppy. So to power on this camera, you pull, push out the lens. We does power on. As you can see right here, it's not uh, like clicking into place like it's supposed to. Let's see if it takes a picture. Yep. No film in there, so it's not actually gonna output anything. So this camera does work. Uh, just the menu toggle on top isn't working quite right. So in that type of condition, I'm gonna assign a value of only about $10. If this was working fine, it would be 25 to 30. So Instax Mini Frankenstein's Monster. A bunch of chargers on the bottom. And each one of these chargers I can use. That one, maybe not, that one's broken. Wah. Branded chargers, Canon, Sony, uh, Panasonic. And each of these chargers are gonna have a value of, oh, let's just give it a value of about six bucks. So total value there of $24. And the last camera in the box is the Sony MVC CD300. Used and sold these. In fact, I've had a buyer, I think it was like five or six years ago on eBay, that uh, sent me some pictures of a vacation that he took that he used this camera on. Uh, and I was blown away by the picture quality. Really, really pretty cool. No power. Wah, wah. Yeah, and I just used both of these, so there may be, yeah, there's some wear in the battery compartment and the screws. I'll have to try to see if I can get this one to working, but this one is not currently working, so no value here. So that's it. This box was a bit of a downer, but to be expected, um, not all of those 14 boxes are gonna be gems. We still covered barely the cost. Once you factor in shipping and eBay fees and whatever marketplace you sell it on's fees, you're looking at probably close to break even. This is the second box for this video and third box for the lot. Again, I paid once you I paid two thousand dollars for everything. And once you factor in that there's 14 boxes, you're looking at a per box cost of about $140. Round it down. First time me seeing these as well. This is gonna be a fun one. Kind of excited. Whoa. Ah, didn't see this one in there. Cool. Look at this beefcake. If it looks big, it's because it is big. This is uses uh, Fujifilm Instax film. A little bit larger size than normal, I think. Um, has a bit of wear. Actually, it's in pretty good shape. So this uses, I think, double A's. Yeah, oh no, it's got corrosion on the bottom. Woo! This one's gonna require a fair amount of work. I've got a bunch of these cameras lined up to go through um, some cleaning and repair. Uh, and hopefully I'll make a separate video on that. It's just too time consuming and I try to do it in batches. So if you have any interest in a video like that, leave a comment down below. In good working condition, this camera actually has a decent amount of value, 80 to $100 I've sold it for. I've sold a fair number of these. Um, even in the condition that it has with the battery tray, 
Um, if for whatever reason I'm not able to get it to work and I sell it as is for parts, it's going to have a value of about $25. So $25 on this. I don't think there's a ton in here. This stuff just weighs a fair amount. Fujifilm Instax Mini 9. Boy, we're getting a lot of instant film cameras today. Use a smaller sized uh, Instax film. Whoop. This, this guy's in pretty good shape. Let's see. Yeah, battery tray looks good. You'll love to see it. Turn it on. Red light is flashing. Which it is supposed to do. And then we'll get a blinking light here on the top for a little bit. Yep. Doesn't have any film inside, so nothing's going to come out, but the film would uh, eject right up on top there. So use good working condition. I've sold sell these all day long for about $30. And that price, generally when I say those pricing, that includes free shipping. So any margin that's left after the shipping costs and eBay fees and Mercari fees and wherever you sell it on fees, you know, shipping is going to take a chunk of that if the, the final sale price is $30. So when I give these overall numbers, it's not factoring in a lot of other costs, just letting you know the overall revenue number versus the overall cost number. Okay. All right, look at this. Cool. It's an eight millimeter film camera. So these were used very often in, throughout the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, I think. I don't have any way to really test this, unfortunately. Uh, but untested condition, you're looking at a value of between $20 and $25 here. A lot of times these are kind of cool just to have as like prop pieces. Um, so you see these sometimes being bought by like production sets and stuff for TV production. Oldies in here. Polaroid uh, LAN camera. These are neat uh, instant film cameras mass produced by Polaroid um, in throughout the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s. This one was made in the USA, it uses Polaroid 600 film. There's no film included and that's how this camera, I believe, powers on and works. So normally I sell these untested and this is gonna have a value of about $28 untested and I've sold hundreds of these. Uh, this dropped the value a little bit. You might've gotten to 30, but uh, it's missing the rubber viewfinder cap. Oh, neat. Sony HDR CX150 camcorder. This is a handy cam. It uses a Sony NPFV50 battery. Hey, there we go. Uses that guy there. Let's throw a battery in. Cool thing about handy cams is they, when you flip out the LCD hinge, they just open. Okay, just gonna format it real quick. For this recording. Recording, recording. And then when I play it back, I just make sure that the audio is working. Hmm, recording, recording, recording. Be like those pictures that people take of them holding pictures of themselves over and over again. You could do that with the camcorder too, I suppose. Uh, this camera in good working condition, you're looking at a value of uh, around $80. Uh, with a USB cable and with a charger. Maybe get a little bit more than that if you if it came with a bag and all of the AV cables, but uh, we've just got the bare essentials for this. Next up, oh, we've got conjoined cameras here. I'll put that one down and do that one second. We've got a uh, Fuji Mini Dual Panorama uh, Plus. Looks like a 35 millimeter film camera. Maybe APS. Yeah, not working quite right. All right, I'll have to do a little more digging on this guy, but if this was in working condition, it'd have a value of like 15 to 20, but no value on this one for now.
Panasonic, uh, model is this? Panasonic SDR H60P. Got a memory card. It has a two gig memory card inside. You can, uh, that might actually work. You know what? That might actually do the trick. This is crazy. This might work. I've got this coupler system here. So even if the charger doesn't work, I think I can run this coupler from the AC adapter into the charger and then just hook this adapter into the camcorder. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool because I happen to have a charging port right down here. Literally right next to me. And we are plugged in. Ooh, power's on. Wow, this was a good idea actually. That way I don't have to have, it only works for this particular type of battery. But uh, yeah, that's really cool. So this camera is powering on. So powered on and the, the lens is zooming out and the camcorder is working just fine. Let me try recording something real quick. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing to playback. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so everything looks good there. And this camera is working. There is wear on the top, as you can see there. Uh, some paint loss and general wear. This camcorder in this fair working condition that it is with the memory card and the charger, you're looking at a value of about $45. If this was in superb working condition, it would be more like probably 65. Is that one? No. This is a JVC uh, GZ MG20U. I've sold a bunch of these. Uh, it uses the short squat battery, the JVC um, VF707. I don't currently have any of those charged, so I need to charge some of those. Even in good working condition, not much value on these uh, $35 to $40 hard disk drive camcorders. I'd say about half the time they work, half the time they don't. Uh, no value for this camcorder yet until we test it. So put it down here. Ditto on this guy. Looks like the same model even. Yeah, same model. No battery. Uh, we'll need to test that as well. But assuming that one of these does work, and this one looks to be in decent working condition, I will go ahead and uh, write one down just by uh, statistical odds. Okay, we've got a JVC. Next, uh, it's a JVC GZ E10 uh, followed by the color nomenclature. And this is a pretty common uh, camcorder that I see, uh, produced like 15 years ago when JVC was making camcorders. I used to actually buy, buy from JVC directly. Uh, camcorders, they had the Pixio line. Uh, they did some kind of interesting stuff, but never really got mainstream mass appeal. Looks to be in good working condition. Uh, this uses a different type of battery which is this guy, and I don't have any of those charged right now. So I'm gonna have to charge this one later, but based on the condition and what I've seen in these camcorders, buying and selling over the last seven years is when the condition looks like this and it's in quite good working, it looks like it's in quite good condition, it's probably gonna work. So the value on this camcorder is gonna be about $45. $45 there. Only got a couple left. We've got a Sony DCR SR45 camcorder. And this is a 30 gig hard disk drive camcorder. So this is where the memory is at, is on the side of the camcorder and a hard disk drive. So these take a little bit longer to start up normally. Um, they are more prone to damage from uh, drops than say having an internal memory uh, stick like an SD card would be. This uses the Sony MPFH40FH50 battery, and I have some of those over there to charge. I got a big battery, so you'll see the size difference between these two, back to back. Quite a bit of size difference. Capacity on this Sony MPFH70 is substantially higher than the MPFH40. So for camcorders especially, if you, you don't have it plugged in, uh, it adds a substantial amount of battery life. Power's on. 
working well, it appears. We're going to go ahead and record and do a quick test. Testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. So for uh, like mini DV tape camcorders and uh, digital aid tapes, I normally do a test of 20 to 25 seconds uh, and make sure that the recording and playback is good without any bars or distortion of the audio. But for these digital, uh, normally you just need a few seconds just to make sure everything's functioning fine. And just double check that the volume is set appropriately. Testing, 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 testing. So that one's good. Uh, this camera with this larger capacity battery in a bundle with a USB cable in good working condition, you're gonna have a value of about $80 on this. Sony DCR SR45. Whoa, look at this guy. Speaking of mini DV, this is a mini DV style uh, camcorder. So pretty small and compact for its day. I'm not sure if I've used that battery before, whatever battery this uses. So I'm gonna have to try to find a battery and see if I can find this. this these camcorders, and Sony makes a few of the style too, like the DCR ICP, I think, series, and the PC5, that actually have a lot of value. I sold a Sony that looked like this just last week or two weeks ago for like 175. Um, this camera has some quite a bit of stickiness as well on the rubber which is common with age of a lot of different cameras. Um, there are some things you can do to kind of reduce it. In some cases, in some cases, the material that they use is such that even when you use some cleaning solutions that I use, you still can't get it off. So I'm not gonna assign a value to this one yet. It does have quite a bit of condition issues. If it was working still and worked great, even with the condition issues, it would still have a value of like 75 bucks. Um, but no value on this one for now. Okay, there's a couple more down here. We've got a JVC, and this is in pretty rough shape. I would not, a lot of these, like I was saying before, the mini DV uh, style camcorders like this one is. Uh, the success rate on a, like a JVC model with mini DV in condition like this is really low. So my priority for getting these tested is generally pretty low. So a lot of times I sit on these for a while before I get a bunch and I'm able to test a bunch simultaneously. So that's what I'll do with this. No value for now. If this was tested in working condition and it looks like it'd be in fair working condition, we'd have a value of about 35 to $40. Uh, Samsung, similar mini DV. Feels very plasticky. So Samsung went through phases with their company where they did some, started with some poor stuff like this in tech and the screen's all messed up. They moved into obviously phone technology, which they're really good at, but they made some cool cameras like the Samsung Galaxy cameras. It's just like using a cell phone with a really good optical zoom. Um, so those were kind of cool and I still sell those. And they've actually gone up in value over the last few years. Don't have a battery for this, need to test. We'll put it in the testing pile. Uh, if this was tested in working condition, it's got a lot of issues. Uh, you'd be looking at a value of probably 30 to 40. Okay, the last thing. I almost didn't see it because it kind of blended it with some, some old batteries that are laying in there. Is this Fujifilm FinePix J38. And this is a camera that uses the very common Fujifilm NP45 battery, which I've gone through. I think I've used these in almost every video that I've had so far. But I have some charged ones. I'll throw it in. Yep, power's on. We'll zoom the lens in and out, see how it works. Looks like it's working fine. Take a picture. Hey, look, I'm taking a picture here. Yep, flash fires. That looks good. Uh, I've sold a bunch of this model. Fairly basic uh, intro point and shoot digicam that does exactly what it's supposed to do. Take decent pictures. Uh, a little bit noisy zoom. Has a little bit limiting 3x optical zoom. So not as good as a lot of other even compact point and shoot cameras, but this one came out uh, like 10 or 12 years ago. So this camera paired with a charger, and a lot of the stuff that I do is pairing with a charger and a memory card, you're looking at a value of about 30 to $35 here with the LCD scratches. Uh, I'm gonna call it a value of 30. 
So last camera, 30 bucks. So based on my quick math, uh, and I'll have the math up here on the screen, but uh, we should have ended that box at a little over $400 or thereabouts. So between those two boxes, we were looking at four plus two was 600 roughly. Yeah, those two combined had about $600-ish in value and a cost to me of about $280. Um, so once you factor in all of my expenses and costs, not much margin on it so far. But we've got some better stuff hopefully coming up in the future. Make sure you stick around for the next video. We'll go through a couple more boxes and hopefully find some gems.